everybody, welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Bay, Nur, Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program, and it really feels good. Mott, we've made the commitment. I think we've got like six guests for the rest of the year. So, you hear that? Six, and three of them you're gonna be really pumped about, so, you know. And even, we may even cut out a couple of, I like this back to basics. I really appreciate all the comments um, from all of you out there about the back to basics. Matt, you read the comments? You saw what was going on? You know, people are like, you know, they like the back. This is what, this is what they say we do best, you know? And so, um, you need to be a great coach and put yourself in the best position to win and that's what I'm gonna do. And so, I'm gonna continue to sit here in front of the bottles, go classic on your little Circa 2006. 2007, I'm excited about that. So thank you for having me and I will continue to try to deliver. I'm excited about this show. We're gonna continue to nerd it up. The Riesling episode went over extremely well. I'm gonna try to keep it tight, not put any love handles on you. Let's get right into it. Oh, July 10th, two weeks away. Make the road trip, Mott, link that up. Pop it, pop it, pop it. Um, it's gonna be a great time, bring out some nice wines and the, and the tasting in New York is gonna be really legit. Everybody's bringing a bottle, Mott. It's gonna be hilarious and enjoyable. Before I start, Enrico in Rome, just keep it up, baby. Big shout out to you, um, and uh, and here we go. Nui St. George, Mott right here, right there. Nui St. George, uh, one of the really intriguing places in all of Burgundy. Got it, Mott? Feel good? Yep. Um, producing really top flight Pinot Noirs. They also have the ability to make Chardonnays, and when they do do Chardonnay, it does say Nui St. George Blanc, so you'll see those around a little bit here and there. Um, it is legal within this AOC, which is not common for everywhere. Um, but not of the big, over the top, $200, $300 profound um, regions in Burgundy. More of the everyday consumer play, though there's no such thing as everyday consumer. 55 US bones, 69 US bones. You know, so let's not get crazy and say this is for all of us, you know, especially the CKCs. Big shout out to you guys. If you haven't been watching for a while, CKC. College kid crew, 21 and older of course, but a lot of juniors and seniors. Good time to give Virginia Tech a shout out. If you are watching from a wine class around the country, I know this is becoming more and more, please leave a comment below or email me at gary at winelibrary.com. I'd love to say hi. So big shout out to 21 to 25 year olds, the CKCs. You know, so this is not necessarily within your price point unless you're a baller, um, but they are definitely a little bit more controllable in price points compared to some of their you know, other friends within Burgundy. And because of that, there are no Grand Cru vineyards within Nui St. George. Now, there are 27 Premier Cru vineyards. We've got two of them here. And then obviously just a straight Nui St. George um, um, classification. Let's get into the first wine and we'll get into more, uh, more stuff in a second. This is the uh, Domaine Daniel Rion 2006 Nui St. George Via Beans, which means old vines. Um, one of the things I think is really interesting about Nui St. George is that a lot of the negotiants um, that uh, go out and buy, you know, grapes and make their own brands are headquartered in, in Nui. Um, and so, really interesting place. I, I still think pretty well priced for the high quality that comes out of here. Definitely the most swallow price point category uh, of, the, of the top regions in Burgundy. Let's get first into the Daniel Rion. Love this producer, I've been buying it for a long, long time. It comes from uh, Fleetwood, uh, Fleet, excuse me, Wine Merchants, uh, which is bringing in some really interesting wine, Sussex. This is 20 US dollars for a half bottle, prorates to $40 for a full bottle. Via Bean, meaning old vines, Via Beans. Uh, this is 85 to 87 points, Alan Meadows. If you know who Alan Meadows is, he is the Berg Hound. Uh, Google him, he's a very, very profound, probably top Burgundian American critic. Uh, he's very conservative, 85 to 87 is very easily an 88 to a 90 from most traditional uh, outlets of media for the wine world. So, you know, this is a pretty decent score for him. You know, putting the context, 85 to 87, 88, 89 to 91 here, and 87 to, 80 to 90 here, and you know, they're well over, you know, about 50% if it was a full body. So, let's give it a sniffy sniff, because that's what we do on the show. If you're watching for the first time, the sniffy sniff, big factor. I want to point out, did a seminar up in uh, Foxwoods, or no Foxwoods, Foxborough, em enemy territory, Mott. I did spit on the field, How'd just if you're wondering. It went well, very well. Um, you know, I see a lot of people doing this, 
you know, I understand it's nice and you're having a dinner and maybe you're on a date, you don't wanna get ridiculous, but I need you to put your schnoz up in it. You know, I need you to close the gap. I need you to not you wanna zoom in here. I mean, I just want people to know no separation. Zero, double zero, Robert Parrish me, you know, Benoit Benjamin me, double zero, no separation. So you wanna get the snippy snip right up in there. And what we're getting here is some subtle rose petals. I'm getting a little red fruit, almost more like a pomegranate than anything else, which is interesting. And a little stinkified action. There's a little, you know, Burgundian wines tend to bring a little of that sheep butt, cow manure, pig crap. You know, it gets very earthy, gets very Farmville USA up in here. And so I get a little bit of that. So a little bit of functified, a little bit of fruit. I do like the cherries and the raspberries that are coming through now in the secondary uh, kind of nose. A little pepper as well. Pretty nose, actually. Let's give it a whirl. Great tannin structure, wow. This is a baby. I mean, a young one. Big tannins actually coming through, which is quite surprising. I didn't expect it to be so um, aggressive, but you get it. Their heat is coming through on the back end as well. Um, 13.5, but I'm getting it a little bit. I'm getting some nice, you know, kind of almost cherries meets raisinets. I get this like raisinette milk chocolate kind of thing coming through. Get a little cinnamon on the back end as well. A little hint of cinnamon, kind of kirschy, strawberry, cherry kind of thing going on, red fruit. Um, not bad. Solid wine, very serviceable, bigger than your American counterpart Pinot Noirs. Um, but definitely the heat is spiking on this wine. I think it's a little off balance. Um, to me, this comes across like an 87, 88 point wine. Uh, I, I, I don't think I can easily recommend it. I do like the half bottle format. Please find wine shops and, and, and restaurants that serve by the half bottle. It's an amazing commitment. I'd really be sad if I opened this at 40 bones, but at 20, and I got to taste it, kind of a different scene. You know, it's obviously the same price structure. Sometimes you're probably paying a premium for the half bottle, but the overall financial investment is lower. It does allow you to try new things. So next time you shop in your wine shop, please ask for the half bottle section. A lot of times people don't have anything really good, unfortunately, you know, push them, give them a little, uh. You know, tell them Wine Library's got a great section. We have a whole lot. That's right, Mott. Mott gave me a little shoulder. Give him a little shoulder. Uh, all in all, average Burgundian wine to me. Rion, an amazing producer, I'm a big fan. This one is their entry level play, so it wasn't supposed to take my pants off and excite me. But um, but that being said, it, it, it delivers for the $20 price point. I'd probably not recommend anybody who's watching this buy it though. That I just think there's other ways to go, and so that's the way it starts. Uh, Domaine de Montetel, uh, 2006 Premier Cru 03, Nui Saint George, uh, 90 points. David Shelneck, uh, Montiel is uh, a very, very 89 to 91 points. Uh, Alan Meadows. This is a very, very, very um, prestigious kind of wine. I've had a lot of their different wines through the years. Um, 55 double nickels in price point, so it is not inexpensive by any stretch of the imagination. It is a little bit lighter in color than the last wine, so getting that elegance, sniffy sniff it up. No separation. A little more aggressive on the nose here. This definitely has even more of that funky uh, thing going on. Little, you know, gym class locker room that you never cleaned out. Um, so you might le might have left a bologna sandwich and a pair of shorts from the second day of school and you didn't wear them once again. I mean, like, that kind of stuff. Little pepper, which I like. A little more white pepper than anything, really. Pretty nose, but a little bit, you know, started off aggressive and kind of became, I'm just, you know, as I'm, I'm continuing to snippy sniff, it's okay. A little radish, believe it or not. A little red radish. Interesting. Let's give it a whirl. Top soil attacks immediately. I get this very earthy top soil thing that hits me right away. Elegance, very subtle, um, classy, uh, kind of um, like money can't buy you class. It's a new song from one of the Desperate Housewives. Don't ask how I know that. Uh, you know, it's it's got some interesting 
the radish, the, the horseradish radish thing continues. It's spicy a little bit, believe it or not, which is an awkward kind of out of left field component here. Good, medium bodied. It's good. It's it, you know, 91, 89, 91 Meadows and 90 David Shunnock, who's writing for Robert Parker. I I did have more expectations going in. I think the rating disappoints me. It's a little bit lighter than I expected. And it's not as complete. I feel like there's a really intriguing disjointing process going on between the mid-palate and the finish. This is the kind of wine that you'd want to pair with duck, um, lobster, you know, lighter kind of seafoods for sure, hen, Cornish hen. You know, so you want to go the lighter, maybe even ribs, though they could be a little bit too aggressive, especially if you get the sauce going. I think this is a little bit of a disappearing act. This is a little Patrick Swayze and Ghost. I mean, you know, can't see it. Well, Demi Moore could, but you know, or no, Whoopi Goldberg could. Eh, I'm not Whoopi. I'm going 87 on this. Major pass. Very disappointing. There's a hair of anger in the back of my voice. I don't know if you're catching it. I'm mad. Let's move on. Domaine Georges Mungare, 2006, Nuit St. George, Premier Cru, Le Chaguenot. Sixty-eight dollars twenty-five cent, ninety-one points. David Shellneck, eighty-seven to ninety. Allen Meadows. Let's give a little rinse. Now again, these wines have an elegance and a pedigree. Oh God, much darker. Ma, can you tell? Much, much darker on the color. That kind of stopped me dead in my tracks. There's a pedigree and a sense of tradition within Burgundy that allows them to command the price point. Puts the limitations. Um, that allows them to command price points that we are not seeing in the U.S. or in Central Otago. That doesn't necessarily say that the wines are better. I mean, you know, these last two wines did not excite me or impress me. That, you know, now, before you get into oh your palate, this and that, you know, you know, I'm a big Burgundy fan, and I would tell you right now that if I was to drink ten bottles of Pinot Noir over the course of a week, let's say you go to Jersey Shore and you do a little Pinot Noir tasting the whole week you're there, you probably have seven Burgundies. So I'm a fan of this category just a little under delivering here today, which is a little bit d- disappointing. Great color on this one, a little bit more, you know, clearly darker, makes you wonder, you know, if it's gonna have more oomph. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. The noses have not been as interesting for me as I was hoping. There we go, a little bit. So again, you're gonna get definitely more earthy tones. This is the one thing I adore about Burgundies over the New World Pinot Noirs that go more you know, cherry cola, you know, raspberry kind of stuff. This is definitely going more subtle cherry on top of a little bit of like, you know, cow poop and a, and a rock. You know, I kind of like that. You know, and I know that can sound, ooh, and like the first time watching, uh, but you know, it's this, it's this earthy tones that I love. Mushrooms, you know, leather, uh, steak, gamey. You sad about the U.S. losing in the World Cup? Were you getting into it? I feel like I jinxed them. You jinxed them. Because I watched... I hadn't been watching them, I watched on Saturday and they lost. You jinxed them. Ghana should send you a present. They should. That last goal by Ghana, that was a beautiful goal. I pride myself in loving the nuances and the delicate aspects of Pinot Noir and wine in general. Probably nobody out there right now as, as excited, in general, but as excited pitching and pushing and pleading with you guys out there to start looking at things like Beaujolais, Pinots, lighter Merlots, and you know, not looking for the over the top. So it pains me to be dramatically more into this wine than the last wine where this one did come with that elegance, with that lighter, you know, kind of style. You know, I, I uh, you can see it here just in color, Ma. I just want to show everybody at home. You seeing it? Is it obvious? It's very obvious. You know, and so I know everybody who's a camera guy or Hollywood guy. I get it. I know we have a crap set, but we like to roll ghetto style. Ma, tell them. That's, that's how we do it. That's how we roll. Uh, but that being said, it's undeniable this wine is tastier, more complex. Not because it's heavier, just more complex. There's more flavor going on. It, you can be very complex, light, uh, but this darker attack it is uh, something that is appealing to my palate right now. It is, it is coating my palate. It's got great structure, long fruit. I love the cherry raspberry thing going on. Mm. Co- 
covers the palate, great strength, great body. Raspberries, cherries, little pomegranate juice in here as well, which I like. Little hint of green undertones underneath, you know, celery stick maybe slightly sneaking in there like, hey, you know, kind of like, whoopsie, what was that, Mortal Kombat? You know, so a little bit of that, well-structured, well-made, a very solid wine, 68.25, 69 bones, 68.25, Bob, a little Price is Right for the Kids, by the way, I learned how to speak English because of that show, $68.25, pushing it for sure, pushing it for sure, but brings it, I'm going 90 points on this, 90 plus, I'm liking this wine, and if you're rolling, I know we always say P. Diddy and Jay-Z, we should start using somebody else, like, Justin Timberlake, you know, he, he rolls, or, or how about A-Rod, he's got cash, or LeBron's about to get his day, so is Joe Johnson. Um, I like it, I like this wine a lot, I think you would like it, and if you wanna roll and you wanna try real, top class, you know, Premier Cru, Nuit St. George, Burgundy, taste the elegance, taste the refinement, but taste the real essence of, of the area. I think this wine does the best job. I agree with Shellneck and Meadows on this one. I'm going 90 plus points. I think it's fantastic. Please uh, text yourself. It is 2010 and try to order it at the next restaurant you're in. Ma, I think we did a good job. I was focused. I felt it. I'd love to fe- get the feedback, but I was like, I was in this zone. I think we're gonna crank out some shows here. I, I feel like we're we're in a rebirth. You know, we're, we're mature now. We're like a four-year-old. We're about to hit kindergarten, preschool. We need to bring it. We're getting very close to episode 900, um, and uh, and I really do appreciate. It. I, I, you know, I got some great emails this week, and I just riff for a second. Thank you so much. I'll I'll just wrap it up right now. A lot of people emailing me saying the reason they don't comment is because they're mobile or they watch on Hulu or on YouTube or other places. So I just want to give a big shout out to my YouTube, break.com, Hulu, big up to you guys. Definitely uh, definitely iTunes, which is a dramatically commanding part of our viewership at this point. Just want to thank all of you, whether you're old school and you go to winelibrarytv.com or you do it in those other platforms, that's why you don't comment. Still a little bit of a bull crap response. Come home and do it, because you know we love it. But uh, I hope you love the show as much as I love putting it on for you. Question of the day. Fourth of July weekend coming up. That's what we got coming up on the back end of this weekend. And people are gonna be with people. So, what wine are you most excited or most interested in sharing with friends and family? It's one of my better questions in a long time. There's something in the air, Mott. I think the fans have spoken. They reshuffled me. You know, sometimes you need a little kick in the pants. I feel I feel a run. I, I think when my Wikipedia is updated in 40 years, they're gonna be like, what he did from episode 890 to 927 was legendary. You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world.